What is going on, beautiful people? It's your boy Blue, and we have a new train simulator today. I oh, I'm so excited. I've uh, been really enjoying this game so far. I've been waiting for it for a very long time. But this, my friends, is Railroader. And if you don't know what Railroader is, you haven't heard about it. It's basically an operations focused railroad simulator. All that will make more sense later on because there's so much to do in this sim. I don't know how much I can even fit in this video. I'm trying to do as much as possible. It's actually 7 a.m. right now. Uh, we're doing company mode, which is basically career mode. And uh, a bit of a background story is the. Uh, this whole railroad, if I go to the map view here, this, which is massive, about 50-ish miles of railroad from end to end, take you about two hours or so to do the whole thing if you wanted to. And uh, there's there's a lot. There's just so, it's so much to do. There's, there's no other train sim uh, that I can think of that's quite like this. There's some that are similar, you know, Railroads Online, Run 8. It's like a mixture between Railroads Online, Run 8, D-Rail Valley. You know, it's... it's it's, it's, it's good. So anyways, um, we, uh, this is the map and, uh, basically we need to, uh, repair the railroad, um, in company mode. If you do sandbox mode, which you can do as well, you can spawn any train you want, anywhere you want and do anything you want. And everything is already unlocked in company mode or career mode. Uh, we start off with this short little short branch here from uh, Whittier to Ella and then down to Connolly. But we have to unlock this grayed out track here. We have to unlock this little section here. Matter of fact, I'm actually currently working on building a bridge to get us from Ella to Governor Island. So uh, we might get to that in this video. I'm not sure. It might be later on in the series. We'll see how much we can do. So me stop blabbing about and start getting going with our operations. So again, we are here um, at my humble little operation. This is our engine number three. Uh, this is the G16 mogul train or uh, locomotive. I'm going to click on select. When you hit select, uh, that allows you to actually control that train or locomotive. So we'll double check here. Uh, we have a few uh, logging, uh, empty logging um, freight cars here that we need to bring over to the logging camp so we can supply this sawmill that we're at right now with logs and we'll get paid for that. So uh, right now the handbrake is applied. So we'll go ahead and release the handbrake. You can also just make sure that the uh, angle cocks are open and at the uh, the glad hand or the air pipes are actually connected. Look at the detail on this coupler. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Um, to uncouple, you just click on it to uncouple, but it's already connected, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and board our train. Welcome, my friends, to Blue Canyon Railway. So yeah, the way it works is basically, uh, you come in here, you have your own railway, uh, your railway company. We'll go ahead and release the independent brake. And the train brake is already released. That's good. We'll put our reverser into reverse. Apply the regulator. Now the handbrakes are released. And that's good. We're rolling. All right. Ping the bell. Honk the horn. Ooh, that's the door. <laughs> Ring the bell. Honk the horn. All right. We'll slow down a little bit. Because I don't want to hit anything. Lean our head out the window. So there's a sawmill right there. So that's basically one of our customers that we need to deliver logs to. So uh, we'll make that happen in a little bit. Before we do that, we are actually short on fuel a little bit. We have 1.6 tons of coal, which is a decent amount, but just to play it safe, we're gonna refuel. Uh, we also gonna get some more water as well. And the water um, tower is gonna be right behind us over there. So here's the water tower right over here, as well as the coal chute. So we're just gonna run our way over here. You can see our train's on its way back. All right, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and we'll use the UI here to to slow ourselves down. There's multiple ways to control the train. You could use the uh, the in cab controls. You could use your keyboard, or you can use your mouse and actually click on the UI items. So I think we're a little bit too far behind. It's a bit difficult to see back there. Obviously, if we're doing multiplayer, which there is multiplayer, I don't know. I forgot to mention that there is multiplayer. Uh, in this um, in this game, so if you guys are interested interested in the game, I am definitely hiring. Could use some help. There is a lot to do in this game. Uh, I'm gonna keep saying that because we're still in the beginning stages. A very humble start. Let's go ahead and click on the water column. It'll rotate it out. There we go, and let it roll forward just slightly so we get right underneath the water. And we're almost there, and right. 
right there should be good yep, there it is it's going to automatically drop down and start filling in the water but yes there's so much to do um and i think the best way to enjoy this game is going to be multiplayer for sure um either sandbox mode or company mode either way it's going to definitely be better multiplayer and uh, it's gonna be good so let's go to fill up with water and it will do coal next all right water is done we can actually walk out there and hop out again it kind of it comes down to how you want to play you could either walk around do everything manually you could use the external cameras you know whatever you're into i i tend to mix them because it just depends on what i'm doing you know since it's just myself on the railroad um it can get pretty busy and, and tedious as well and sometimes you just you know you just don't want to do everything we're gonna go ahead and close the water hatch there and we'll release our independent brakes and we'll slowly move forward until we get underneath the coal conveyor. Now, one thing that's interesting about the coal conveyor, and I like this mechanic, uh, it teaches you this in the tutorial. Um, a little bit farther along than that, but basically the conveyor doesn't just generate its own coal automatically. You have to supply it with coal. We'll go ahead and click on the coal chute, and that's going to now start sending coal down. And so this, this coal is actually coming from this coal freight car over here, this coal loader. And so if this runs low, you do have to take this train, this uh, freight, empty freight car when it gets empty or, or low, take it over to the interchange, which is actually behind us over there. That's where you take the empty cars or the delivery cars. And then overnight, another train will come and pick it up and then it will refill it. And then you have to go and pick it up from the interchange track, bring it back to wherever it belongs, whether it be here in this case, uh, if it's a customer order, we have to take that to the customer along the line. So that's kind of how it works. That's why it says it's operations based because a lot of this game is game is focused on the operational aspect of the railroad. Um, as you probably noticed when we were driving the train, it's not really that detailed as far as how the train itself operates, but it's more about how the railroad operates, if that makes sense. But I love the fact that you do have to go and kind of manually take your coal and get it refilled and then that supplies with the coal loader and that's the same way it works throughout the route there's multiple of these um, of these shoots around now the water is automatically filled there's also diesel uh, there's a couple of diesel trains you can do you can actually refill the the diesel as well so that's going to keep loading until we're completely full which it should be almost done uh, if i hover over our tinder we can see yep four thousand gallons of water and six tons of coal so that's good let's go ahead and raise the coal chute and this is the type of stuff I really like. I love I love this type of gameplay. So uh, all right, now let's go and take these uh, take these over to the logging camp and get some logs filled. So we we'll go ahead and go back into the inside with the one key. We got the reverser already in four. Independent brake release, train brake release. All the brake pipes and stuff already connected. Already check that, and we're good to go. We'll hit the cylinder cocks. Couple honks of the horn. And we'll go ahead and start moving. So again, using my UI here, I can actually drag here, drag this, and start rolling. If I hit the zero key, I can now have the camera centered on the train. All right, that's good. Kill the bell. We are rolling. All right, so what are we doing now? So I'm going to move our camera up down the line a bit because we do have a switch we need to flip. So this is where we came out of from the sawmill. Let's go ahead and hit that switch back to normal or green. You can now see those are lined up. And we're going to take us off to the yard lead out here to the end. And that's already set. And then we're going to go all the way down the line. The way we want to go is going to be left here. I've done this route a couple times now. And uh, so I know it pretty good. So I'll make a right left turn there and continue down the line. So that's all good to go.
All right, we just crossed through the Whittier Y or the little turnaround track here, and we're going through the Connolly section of the map. Uh, again, this is where logging happens, and we're going to be expecting to go right around here on this track. But right now, we're going really slowly. We're going 13.7 miles per hour, and we're going a little bit faster. I got 41% of the throttle in. So if you guys know anything about steam trains, as you pick up speed, you do want to start bringing your reverser back a little bit. It's kind of like shifting gears in a way. Uh, you bring the, the reverser for, or closer to you, not neutral, but closer to you to help the train gain a little bit of speed. So now we're gaining 17.8, 18 miles per hour at the same um, regulator notch there. So that looks good. So uh, as I was saying earlier, as you can see, the train in the interior of the trains are really not extremely detailed. The firebox does open. Uh, very simple. Um, I think the water level glass does work as well but it's not so much about the train operation but more about the railroad operation at least as of right now i'm hoping that in the future they'll put a little bit more uh detail into the actual train um operation the physics are, are okay they're not the best not the greatest but um there are physics happening <laughs> for sure uh but it's, it's not the most detailed it's like it's not the most detailed or realistic steam experience ever um, there's a lot of trains though there's about 15 locomotives uh included in the early access right now i'm in you know kind of career mode so i'm slowly progressing i only have two of them um but over time i'll unlock more and i'm definitely looking forward to that i think we do probably like 25 down this track it's pretty windy and bendy you can derail you don't want to derail obviously because if you do derail uh you'll damage uh, your freight cars, your, your you know, your damage was on the freight car, your damage your actual train as well, and all that does actually cost money, in-game money. It's going to bring our uh, regulator or reversal back a little bit more. Try to get a bit more speed. We might want to go down. We'll see how that works for us. It's very, uh, very high vegetation. I have my graphics set to maximum. Everything is turned all the way up. My vegetation's all the way up. My draw distance is all the way up. So again, it's not the most beautiful train simulator for sure but honestly with the time that i've spent on it the the gameplay side is enjoyable enough for me to ignore where it lacks in graphics it doesn't look bad i don't think it's an eyesore it doesn't bother me um i think it does have its moments of beauty as well um but yeah it's not the most beautiful train sim i've ever played for sure but i still enjoy it i enjoy the industry moves i enjoy uh, the, the the gameplay side of it and that's really important you know what I'm saying we're about halfway uh, to the logging camp so we hit the I key here and you can actually see uh, this is my company info I have my operations report my daily report so I delivered 202 passengers yesterday uh, each day your daily report will update you have a overall rating passenger network service rating so if you derail trains and in, in, in damaged trains your ratings will go down uh, you'll get less job offers, less contract offers because of that. Um, less passengers, you know, will want to ride with you, things like that. There's also milestones. So one of the big first milestones is repairing the Ella Track Bridge. So we're currently working on that. We actually already have the freight cars sitting back at the yard waiting for us to take over there. Uh, we'll try to do that today. You have your finance page. You have the locations. So these are all the different locations that you have unlocked that you can access. Uh, so like Whittier Sawmill, that's the one we're working right now. Uh, and it tells you you can accept different contracts for this company. Uh, the depot, there's all kind of stuff in here. Uh, Ella Station, that's for passenger stuff. Uh, your equipment page shows all your different locomotives. Oh, we're almost there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. We got to stop here. Let's come back. All right. Yep. This I, so I already had this lined up because I have done this run before. So thankfully, I didn't have to worry about it, but that definitely would have caught me off guard. So if I hit the two key here and I hit the tab key, it'll show above our consist where each freight car is supposed to go. If I hover my mouse, let's get a little bit more speed here. Uh, oh, that's not speed. Let's go yeah, a little bit more speed. If I hover my mouse over one of these tags, it'll show where that car is supposed to go, like where the destination is. Let's give it a little bit. We're, we lost all of our momentum going up this hill. There is definitely a hill here. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Keep pushing. Get in there. 
All right, so we're rolling. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so as you hover over the tab, you can see it shows you kind of like the track where it's supposed to go. If you hover over the actual freight car itself, it shows you its destination. It's Connolly Creek uh, Track L2, and it's currently empty. So that's the information to make it nice and easy for you. You can also hover over your own tender and it tells you stuff about that as well. So I like that. It makes it a lot easier to find the tracks. Once you run, you know, these lines a bunch, you'll understand where everything goes. But in the beginning, as a beginner, it's definitely helpful to know that. All right, so we get to the end of the line here. We'll come back on our throttle. And I think we're already in the track. Let's see. Are we in it? Yeah, we're already in it. We can stop anywhere around here. So we'll hit the independent brake softly. Get to a nice stop there. And there we are. So, all right. So now we have delivered the empties to the track that's going to supply us with logs. If I go down here, there we go. So what I can do is I can go to that company menu again. We can go over to uh, locations, Connolly Creek L2. Okay, we can highlight that here. We can actually teleport to it if we weren't already here. And also shows us that L2 right here produces 12 cars of logs per day. That's 12 cars of logs per day. So I'm actually already thinking about buying uh, some more of these uh, free cars so I can do more logs at a time. So you can see it's already loading up. So I think it takes about one or two game hours to actually finish. So while that's happening, we can uh, step away and work on something else. All right, I'm going to open up the map and uh, there's one very, very handy feature in here uh, where you can teleport. Now, since I'm in single player, I don't have anyone else here with me and I want to I don't want to run my train all the way back to run all the freight ops. What I can do is I can go in basically anywhere you hover your mouse, you can hit control T on the map and it'll teleport you there. The same thing works like in person. So if I were to hover my mouse over that area over there, I can hit control T and that kind of just teleports me to that spot. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't hate it. Obviously, some people are going to be a bit more hardcore and they only want to, you know, travel by the locomotive or by foot. But in my case, where I have a lot going on, I'm just going to, you know, just teleport. So we go to so Whittier here. There's a train right here shown by this two engine number two. It's my other train. And we go right next to that track. I'm hit control T. And that is going to jump me over to Whittier. So you see here, here's my other train. This is my passenger train. Now we can use this locomotive for anything, but I chose to use this specifically for passenger operations. Uh, so I had the AI running it earlier, but now we're going to run it ourselves. So uh, we walk over to the station itself. Uh, we'll see we have 51 passengers waiting and our passenger car can fit 60 passengers, which is perfect. So I'm going to control click on my passenger car that opens up the menu down here. I'm going to now go to the passenger tab and click on Ella Station. So that's the station we're taking passengers to. We're currently at Whittier. We're taking people to Ella. So you can see now passengers are now boarding. So we have five, seven, ten. So people, tra passengers are now getting on the train. Now, sadly, I know a lot of you guys are going to be bummed about this, but sadly, you do not have any actual physical passengers. You will not see any passengers in the game at this moment. Again, this is early access. This game is not complete. There's still a lot to be added, uh, including that. So you won't see any people on the train or inside the train. It's just simulating that people are getting on. So use your imagination. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this train. I'm going to select it so that way we now have control over it. Make sure that it's set to manual so the AI does not have it either and we can actually get ready to depart. So it looks like the handbrake is actually on right now. Okay, so I just found another early access bug. So the actual handbrake on this tender is reversed. So uh, when it says release, it's actually applying, and when it says it's applying, it's actually releasing. So that should hopefully be a pretty easy fix. But um, we are in a new locomotive. This is a different one than the engine three. It looks a little bit similar, but it's definitely different. This is the 10 wheel um, steam train here. So we'll go ahead and Release our independent brake, make sure our reverser, which is over here, is now forward. We'll hit the bell, like so, lean our head out the window because we're a freaking boss. <laughs> and then we'll hit the horn. There we go. Add some throttle. And just like that, we are rolling from the station. So it's gonna be a nice short drive out to Ella. Drop these passengers off.
All right, quick look at the map just to show you guys where we are. So we're in Whittier, and uh, this passenger service runs all over to Ella. So again, very short drive uh, just from here to there. Uh, speed limit is about 35 for the majority of the routes. Um, so if you don't know what the speed limit is, you're pretty safe at 35 miles an hour. Um, but I think it does drop down to 30 through this bin right here. So it's also another little uh, a little yard next to it where some custom orders can be delivered from time to time. I don't have any right now, but it's a bit of a bendy bit. But I, again, I, I don't hate the scenery. I don't hate it. It doesn't bother me too much. It's 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 nice. I like it. Most of it's single track. There are uh, quite a bit of uh, sidings and and, uh, and yards and things like that to deal with if you need to do a crossing. Uh, again, you can have AI run your trains. So, for example, this particular passenger service, I have been having the AI run it back and forth while I go and do the logging because, you know, it's just me. Uh, and so it's there's that option. You could also help have the AI help you with doing yard work and stuff. I'll have to show you that sometime in the future. All right, here we come around the bend. Let's get ready and prepare to stop. Couple trees in our way. And we'll hop on the brakes now. It's a very, very tiny station here in Ella. But we might miss it there. Oh, we might just get it. Oh, yep, yeah, that'll work. That's close enough. So we can go ahead and hop back to first person view. We'll walk back to the back here. And we can see that passengers are deboarding as the number is counting down. Again, we don't see any passengers, sadly, but it does simulate the passengers. Boarding and deboarding. So let's take a look, real quick look at the uh, passenger car. We will open up that door. We can walk up the stairs and open up that one. And again, very basic. I mean, there's really nothing special <laughs> about this passenger car at all. I think I left this door open. Um, so that's that. that. Yep, that that was that. And we can walk back here to the caboose. Caboose has an interior as well. And there it is. And then we'd also climb up to the top here, the caboose. And we can see out the back. And I think that light comes on at night. I don't remember. So they do have interiors, which is nice. And there's, again, I think there's five different passenger carriages um, or cars uh, included in the game. And you can buy them. So in company mode, you have to buy them um, because I think they're owned by you. There's some free cars that are owned by you and some free cars that are owned by the customer. Um, and then... Uh, there is, again, 15 different locomotives that are available uh, in early access. So, all right, so they are done. They're unloading. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you the AI here. So I'm going to click on, actually, I'm going to click on our passenger car here. And I'm going to go ahead and select passenger. We're now going to select Whittier Depot because now we are, oops, did they finish? Yeah. Uh, now we're going to accept passengers going back to Whittier Depot. Look at that. We just uh, got paid $60 for 60 fares. So that's one thing I got to tell you is that passenger ops is really not the best way in the beginning to earn money. It's still fun to do, especially once you extend the line, but you're not going to make a ton of money on passenger ops. Uh, the best way to earn money to really progress in the beginning is to do the freight moves, do the freight customers, uh, and then do passenger on the side. It does actually kind of hurt you by not doing passenger because you earn a lot of uh, reputation by doing them and you lose a lot by not doing them so you need to do at least one passenger run per day um, to keep your reputation up so anyway so passengers are loading that is all good so what i'm going to do is i'm actually not going to run this train back uh so what we could do we could bring this train up into this yard up here we could run around the train so bring the tra uh, the locomotive to the back of the train and then reverse it back to whittier because there's no turnaround over where we are um or we could just reverse so i'm just going to reverse <laughs> Why not? We're just gonna reverse. We're gonna uh, send this train via AI. Like, right, uh, control click on the engine. Go to orders and go to road. So there's road mode. There's yard mode. Uh, road mode is just means the train is gonna go and go and go until there's a track going against it or a train going against it or something in the way. Let me see. Are they done? Yeah, they're done. All right. So we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to reverse. And then we're gonna set a speed for thirty because that's like the the lowest speed of the line. There we go. So again, this is the AI now controlling this train. It's not me. So he's going to reverse back until something else gets in the way. And there he goes. 
So this is an easy way to kind of get trains moving in different directions while you're doing other things. So I'm going to meet this train back in Whittier. All right, I'm here at Whittier now. And uh, basically, I want my train to come back to Whittier and stop at the station. Now, currently in this early access build, it, it won't just automatically stop at every station. So you got to do uh, something. And what we got to do is we ha either have to set like some kind of you know, locomotive or freight car in the way so it can't continue. It'll stop when it detects there's something in the way. Or you can set the uh, the line against it. You can set the track against it. So have, like this is green right now, set this to red and it'll stop right before that. Uh, or the other option is basically set like a flare. Uh, you can hit control F, hover your mouse, mouse over where you want it, hit control F, and that'll put a little um, uh, fuse or flare down and the train will keep driving all the way until it sees that flare and it'll stop before that flare and it'll passengers will automatically stop offloading as long as it's in the right spot. So you might have noticed we had a fuse over at the other station because I've been running uh, AI trains from there. So basically I have a fuse here and a fuse at the other one and I have a passenger AI train is running both ways. So uh, we'll wait for the train to get in. All right, here he comes backing on up into the station. And if I got my calculations correct, he should stop. Yep, there it is about a car and a half away from the flare. He'll honk his horn and he will ring the bell. And there it is. We can walk up here to see that our passengers are indeed the boarding. And again, anytime you walk up to these stations, you can hover your mouse over the station uh, agent window right here. And it'll tell you how many passengers are actually currently here and waiting. Sometimes it's worth it for waiting a little longer because more passengers might generate for that route to get a fuller train and make the trip a bit more worth it. All right, here we are entering back into East Whittier and um, I actually decided to give the AI control of the train and I'm just hanging her on the back of the tender. If we go to um, the outside view, you can see I'm just back there hanging up, hanging around. <laughs> uh, one thing I forgot to do though, and that is uh, we need to tell him to stop. So I'm going to run back here and I'm going to hit control F right before here. There we go. Put a fuse. Okay, he ran. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Hope I didn't break anything. Um, but he made it. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take this train back, sir. I'll I'll take I'll take that train from you, sir. No, no, no. That's mine. Brakes on, please. That's my fault. I I forgot to tell him that he needs to stop, but. All right, so I got the AI. Uh, I'm gonna have him pull the uh, logs into the yard. I just put them on road mode. You could also put them in yard mode as well. Um, I don't currently understand that mode enough to get it to work, but we'll have him take the train into there. And uh, while he's doing that, I want to show you one other thing uh, that's happening over here. So over here, this is also a part of the sawmill. And these are basically, once the logs come into the sawmill, uh, the sawmill then does, you know, what sawmills do, and they process the wood, uh, and they create uh, exports, right? So this right here is, uh, it's like 40 tons of dimensional lumber, two cars. So we're going to need to actually take these over to the East Whittier, uh, what's it called, the uh, interchange, so that we can actually uh, send them off to the customer. Uh, to get paid for that for uh, for today. So that's another thing we got to do as well. All right, sweet. He made it to the drop off. And uh, we should honestly start seeing logs uh, disappearing off. Yep, there it is. So it's already they already taken one log. So again, over time, uh, they will take the logs off. Uh, it takes a bit longer for them to offload than to load, I think. Uh, we probably won't be able to use this until like late tonight in game or tomorrow. But that's all we need there. I'll go ahead and just take control uh, from the AI and let him take a break there. All 
All right, here we are pulling back into the East Whittier Interchange. Again, uh, this is where basically a lot of the cars originate. There it is. We got the uh, interchange fee, $65, uh, about 120 bucks for just these two cars. So that shows you just how much more lucrative the freight stuff is versus the passenger stuff. So we'll go back over here and set the handbrake. Don't have to set the handbrake, just good practice. And we'll go over here and uncouple. And that's good to go. So we've been, we've now delivered that. That came from the sawmill based on logs that I delivered like a couple days ago. So now there's really just one last thing I need to do uh, on this day on our railroad. And that is we'll hit the tab key and take a look at these. So let's see. These first two freight cars need to go to the Whittier sawmill. That's where we just came from. Track S01 and S02, the outbound track. That's for tomorrow, so whenever we get some more logs in. Uh, we have Stencil going into BB2 as another one, another customer of ours. We have Holyfield Heating, which is another customer of ours. So these are basically some customer orders that we have that we need to deliver. And then behind that, we have the ELA Bridge site, which is where we're going for our um, to rebuild the bridge so that we can continue moving farther to the west. So that's what I'm going to prioritize right now is getting those where they need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back up. So go ahead and start that. I'm going to go ahead and back up and we're going to push these freight cars. I'm going to push all of this over by the, uh, the passenger station that we were at before and then we'll leave the customer cars there and we'll take the rest of this over to uh, the construction site. And one other thing that I hadn't mentioned is this green building behind us is actually, uh, I believe that's the repair. That's for repairing. Um, if you have, uh, if any of your locomotives get damaged, you can take your locomotive inside of that repair shed. And uh, I have an employee in there who will fix the locomotive. I, I think last time it took them like a full game day to fix it. Uh, not sure if that depends on the damage or what, but that's what that is. All right, we're approaching uh, Whittier Yard and Station. And actually, you can see that passenger train is heading out now for another passenger run. I got them set up to do another AI passenger run. So we'll go ahead and come off on the throttle. We're going to try to see if we can fit these four cars right here in this little section. All right, cool. Right on the spot. So that's perfect. That, that fit, that's perfect amount of space for those four cars. And we will disconnect the... First, close angle cocks. Do not forget to close angle cocks. So you'll be dragging the brakes. We'll open the air hose, disconnect that, and we'll set the handbrake on this freight car alone. There we go. All right, cool. And now we can go and disconnect back up, turn around, and go down to the uh, bridge. Well, I didn't really think this through when I sent that passenger train out to Ella because uh, now it's actually blocking the single track that we have to go down. So we have to wait for them to come back before we can actually proceed. All right, line is clear. We're good to go now. So we'll go ahead and keep pushing. We go passing by Ella again and uh, again where we're going is actually going to be to the broken or the construction site which is right over here at the what showing as the end of the line so what we're trying to do is deliver these supplies once we deliver all the supplies uh, they can finish building the bridge now I don't think what we have is the final step to building the bridge I think this is only just step two so after this, I believe there's going to be another 
tier. Let's see, it's under milestones and then in progress. So yeah, we're on phase two out of three. So once we deliver this, uh, we should get another set of cars back at the interchange to bring back to this location uh, so that we can finish the uh, the bridge. So we still have a little bit more to go. Uh, we will not finish the bridge, sadly, it looks like in this video. I thought this was the last phase, but I was wrong. This is not the last phase. So I'm just gonna make sure that we don't overrun because the end of the line is the end of the line. I uh, don't want to crash into the end of the line. That would be very, very bad. So we'll just keep an eye out. This is coming up pretty soon. We'll start adding some brakes here. And again, we can hit tab and we can hover over and we can see, yep, we're already in the track siding there. So let's go ahead and add the rest of those brakes in and we can stop anywhere here. <clears throat> here is good. There we go. Well, independent brakes on. We'll leave a little bit of air inside there. We'll release it and then probably put 10 more pounds on there if we need to. Actually, I'll just release it, that's fine. So let's go out here and that's delivered. So it's gonna basically take a day for them to process uh, all of the bridge parts and then we'll uh, get the good to go to go pick up uh, the third load for phase three so that we can finish the bridge but that's kind of how railroads work if uh, you made it this far you are amazing as you can see here here's the the bridge construction and you can also see there's like some trees in the way that still need to be demolished but yeah it's pretty cool i like the idea of like you know having to bring supplies out to build a bridge so that we can continue uh to the rest of the line but that's pretty cool so so the interesting thing is that overnight uh, the construction crew will actually offload all of these materials and we'll be left with some empty flatbeds that we are going to have to then bring back the empty flatbeds uh, back to the interchange so that they can, you know, take them off uh, to wherever they need to go. But uh, yeah, in the next video, we will continue uh, with more operations uh, the next day. We'll probably see if we can finish the bridge up. Uh, in the next video. How about that? And finally, extend our line towards the West. But guys, I gotta say, I do really like this game so far. I've had a lot of fun. It's not perfect. It's not even done. It's in early access. Uh, if they had released this as a, you know, a 1.0, as a full version, this would be a completely different tone of video. But I'm liking it so far on the gameplay side. It's pretty fun. I can't wait to uh, try this out in multiplayer. But guys, until next time, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. All the way from Blue Canyon Railway. We'll see you guys next time, next video. <laughs>